Does dairy spike your insulin? Is it going to be a problem, especially for women? Well, let's look at the data and I have a solution for you. After today's video, I put a link down below for 50% off Haya. Now, if you have kids like I do, Haya is a tremendous way to give them a tasty multivitamin. So this stuff is sweetened with monk fruit. My kids love it. Heck, I end up taking them too because they taste good. There's nothing bad in it. It's just a monk fruit sweetened chewable vitamin. So the idea behind Haya is just instilling good habits, instilling good habits with the kids, teaching them that it can be fun. My kids get to decorate the bottles and like, I don't know, they just have a blast with it. It actually has become a little ritual, which in and of itself is just kind of fun. Even when we travel, they want to bring them. So 50% off Haya multivitamin for kiddos and also for you if you're just a fun parent that likes tasty things. So that link is down below, saves you 50% off. Darren and Adam, who are the founders, are very good friends of mine. They have kids, they have very similar moral compass values with their kids, and I think you'll probably agree as well. You'll probably be in the same boat. So that link is down below underneath this video. There was a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and it took a look at a high red meat diet compared to a high dairy diet. Now at first the results were really scary because it found specifically with women that women ended up having a 14.7% decrease in their insulin sensitivity. Meaning on paper, this looks like it's really bad, but there's something that you should know, okay? Dairy does spike insulin, but it doesn't spike insulin the same way that say a sugary treat spikes insulin. There's something called an insulin to glucagon ratio. So when you consume something that has dairy or something that has whey specifically, because there are studies that demonstrate that whey protein is very insulinogenic. So then why aren't all these people that are consuming whey like morbidly obese, right? Like if it's that big of a problem. Well, it's because of this insulin to glucagon ratio. When we consume protein, it does spike our insulin, but it also spikes something called glucagon. And it does this so that we do not go hypoglycemic when we consume protein. So think about it like this. Protein spikes insulin because the protein needs to get into a cell. So we need it to spike insulin to absorb it. Okay, but if we did that, and we didn't also spike what's called glucagon, we would end up having all the glucose in our bloodstream go into the tissues as well, meaning we would go hypoglycemic. So when we secrete insulin along with protein, we also secrete glucagon. And this glucagon prevents that glucose from coming into the cell as much and allows the protein in, in sort of a colloquial way. So it's not the same as eating a bunch of sugar. That being said, Here's a couple tips for you if you're concerned about the insulin spike from dairy because eventually it can still add up in a person that is insulin resistant. Opt for the dairy that is lower in whey and has a slower digestion time. So opt for something like a higher fat Greek yogurt, a higher fat Bulgarian yogurt, higher fat cottage cheese. The saturated fat content in the dairy is not gonna be enough to cause a problem. If anything, it's probably going to help you by having a more sustained release protein. You may wanna avoid straight up milk. You may even wanna avoid half and half for a little while and maybe just go for the heavy cream. This sounds kind of counterintuitive to typical health information, but we have to remember that if you're concerned about spiking insulin, you have to take different things into consideration. So don't be afraid of dairy, don't be afraid of the protein insulin spike. It's a normal, natural thing, but just know how to navigate it. I'll see you tomorrow.